All right, guys, so Hardware Hound here, and I have finally done it. I have made it to the NVIDIA showroom. And when I say finally, I don't mean like as in getting here, although it was kind of a heck of a trek, but I actually was able to get the appointment ahead of time. They were expecting me, and I got to talk to them and find out what's going on, get some good detail explanation, and... As you guys already know, NVIDIA is doing awesome things, doing a really amazing job in the graphics card world. And, well, hey, let's talk about what they're showing and what they're doing. So the big release here for CES, yeah, it may not be the RTX 2080 Ti because they kind of announced that already. But, yes, they are releasing the 2060. So they have been showcasing that and explaining some details. And we're going to go into more of that here in a second. They also have a whole fresh lineup of laptops with the RTX 27 and 2080. They've got their mobility versions that are way more power efficient while still improving tons of performance. So we can just take a look at these guys. Look at all these companies here that are adding new lineups to the RTX graphics card line. Well, lap gaming laptops with RTX in it. We've got Legion here. We've got, I believe this one was a Razer. We've got an Alienware. Come on over here. We're going to keep going. So I really wanted to keep talking. And just while we're talking, we're just going to, I'm going to keep walking past. And they've got all of these gaming systems. I mean, it would, uh, do, do you guys just have LAN parties at night? Shh, you do? I wish. You wish. Shame. Okay, guys, NVIDIA has disappointed me. They do not throw a LAN party and oh, I cannot believe it. But there is just 50 dozen. Look at all these gaming desktop systems, running displays. This showroom floor is awesome. So we've got now some more displays coming in here. And we're going to start getting into this ray tracing world of video gaming. Now, guys, ray tracing was one of those things that I was like, hmm. All right, I know what it's supposed to do. I know what I like about it. But how good is it for real? <clears throat> so, let's come over here, guys. Now, all these scenes are using ray tracing. And they've got Battlefield 5 here. We have Justice here, though. And I want you guys to come take a look. So, come zoom in on this monitor right here. Guys, this scene has the ray tracing on. And as you can see, there's a lot of shadows and stuff going on. So the ray tracing is part of what it does is reflections. And as you can see, there's some really clear reflections. If I turn it off, the metal turns kind of flat. Turn it on, look at reflections on the metal. So here we go. Slow-mo, reflection, looks cool. Oh, went flat. I turned it off. Oh, wow. Hey, that's pretty cool. It makes a lot of metal things look more realistic. But, all right, let's be honest. We've got some slow-mo going on. We're, we are zeroing in on little tiny patches of armor and thin sword blades. Is that really making a huge impact on the gaming experience? Well, yeah, it could, especially in cinematographic, cinematography-style type games where it's really focused on the movie. But come back in here now. Look at this water. See this reflection? Doesn't that... Now, I just turned it off. Now, we're going to get past this. Doesn't that just look like every water in every game? Flat and kind of not realistic? Now, watch what happens, though, when I turn this baby on. Doesn't this actually look like a rainy sidewalk? Doesn't this actually look like a canal? Like, if you looked at a canal in real life, you would see reflections off the water in light, and it would be shimmering. And this ray tracing is bringing that. You turn it off, and the water looks dull. It looks flat again. Not look. Turn it back on. Holy... Look at that. That looks great. Guys, when we're talking about, like, especially MMOs, and so Justice, if I'm not mistaken, is an MMO, right? Yes, it's an MMO that's going to be releasing soon. You know, you've got these environments that are trying to pull you into this new world and immerse you into it. And when you see things like this that look that good, it makes that experience all the more fun. I mean, how many of you guys remember your first MMO experience when you went, oh my goodness. Mine's was when I was playing a paladin and I walked into Stormwind for the first time in World of Warcraft. Now we're talking ages ago <laughs> and Stormwind does, didn't look that great back then. And still I was like, whoa. And that's what these new technologies are doing because it's, you know, you lose those wow factors and you're like, whoa, that was cool. So, guys, this is really, really cool. I'm really excited about it. But we got 
another thing that we got to look at. So you know what the best news about being at CES has been? I think I've gotten to play more video games here than I have in like the last two months because, well, <laughs> been too busy to play video games lately trying to get ready for CES. But hey, every once in a while I get to take a load off. And guess what? We are playing Battlefield 5 and you've got to see this. This is the BFGD. It is here. It is coming soon to a store near you or online retailer, whichever works. So guys, this is 4K resolution. And right now we're looking at, I believe, 120 hertz. Now this thing can be overclocked to 144 hertz, but right now I'm already feeling like 120 hertz is looking really smooth. Look at what we've got going on here. We also have really low latency all right let's see if i can i haven't never really played this game guys so if i'm terrible that's what you should expect from me but also i'm heard that this is kind of well i don't think i can die or at least i'm pretty sure i can't can i crouch can i get behind something hey i oh wait yeah there we go there we go okay i'm i'm, I'm saving myself here i'm almost dead I don't think I'm almost dead. But yeah, I mean, look at how smooth this is. The colors, the fire. Um, yeah, we have HDR at 1,000 nits. And you know what I believe about HDR, guys. It is fantastic. It just, all the brightness is much better. The colors are deeper. Like, I can come here to this flame and look at it. And just it's just going to look bright and vibrant and realistic. So HDR is amazing. This screen deserves to be in every man cave that has ever existed. Guys, if you are a man and you don't have a man cave, well, then you need to get yourself a man cave. And then you need to get this. And we should start a GoFundMe for men everywhere. They need their own BFGD. All right, guys, we got one more thing to look at. Let's go ahead and head over to the other room. I know, guys, big, fancy, awesome hardware. That's the things we, like, love to get to, and we love to be like, hey, it's an RTX 2080 Ti. It's this giant GPU. We got four of them in SLI, and this is amazing. Oh, that's great. And, yeah, we get really excited about those things. And sometimes we start talking about software and features, and we're like, uh, whatever. Does it really matter? Guys, let's go into this DLSS one more time as we are hitting our last spot here on NVIDIA. So I got the rundown. Now, I'd be, I'll be honest, DSL hasn't totally clicked with me yet. So I got the rundown, and I'm like, wait a minute, really? Anti-aliasing. It's kind of the bane of anybody who games on anything lower than 4K, right? I mean, 1440p doesn't do too bad, but when you're at 1080p, anti-aliasing is kind of like, oh, crap. What I didn't realize, and maybe I should have, so hey, <laughs> I don't want to say that it's anybody to blame, but... DLSS is our solution to anti-aliasing problems. All right, guys, this is why I didn't realize. So we've got, like, the, NVIDIA's got this display here. This screen, they're running the same benchmark. This screen is using a TAA, which is considered the gold standard. I wouldn't know I use cheap anti-aliasing because I have mid-range graphics cards. This guy here is using DLSS for its anti-aliasing. If you look at this stuff closely... And go ahead and come in here now. Let's try to get into these guys. If you're watching this, what you're going to start seeing is... Now, you may have trouble seeing this on camera, but this screen looks a lot sharper than this screen. And it's 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 not like super huge enough to where like maybe it would not may not quite show up on that camera. But regardless, in person, it's like a clear difference. Like, wow, this one looks sharper. Also, 53 frames, 38 frames per second. Anti-aliasing is killing our performance here, where DLSS is not. That's really cool. Guys, where this really shows up is interesting, too. So if we get to a freeze frame here, come in here to this crystal cluster, if you can. So here's anti-aliasing. And what do we have here? We got a little bit of shadow, we got a little bit of shimmer, and we got a little bit of just white blob. And then if we come over to this guy, and I'm hoping this really shows a difference, it looks like a crystal set. Like, we've got lines, and it looks like we've got spears of crystal shooting out, and it's very obvious. Guys, that to me is, like, kind of impressive. So, DLSS is amazing for that. Guys, 
what they're doing in NVIDIA, now that I understand it, there's a reason why DLSS is taking its time in getting things figured out and improving performance across game tiles. They basically take, from what I understand, they take an image that is at 16,000 by like 32,000 resolution. They use that kind of amount of pickle, pixels, huge amounts of pixels where there can't be any jaggies, no jaggies. And they use those for training. Guys, you can't train that on your desktop PC. They're using their supercomputers to train it. But as they train it, they are able to get this kind of image quality out. Now, here's the thing, though. As they train, if they have game titles that look the same, then that one title that looks like a whole bunch of others can be the groundwork for all the others. The more it's 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 like any kind of work project. Yeah, you know, tipping that bucket over. It's a little hard to get it started, but once you get started, it starts just rolling downhill. Nvidia, they are working hard to get this DLSS off the ground, and it's going to be the slowest start at the beginning. But as they keep going, it'll start rolling. You know, if you've got a game that's in Unity, then there's going to be a good chance that multiple games in Unity will benefit from DLSS without even having to be trained because they are the same start art style and rendering as the first one. So as this technology is around longer and longer, as NVIDIA keeps adding the training to it, we're going to just see it snowball and grow and grow. So that's what DLS, uh, DLSS really means. No jaggies, smooth, sharp gaming that can also adapt to different styles and images as it learns and grows. I thought that was actually super cool and really exciting. Guys, this is the NVIDIA booth. We've gotten to see some cool things. I am so glad I got to get here. CES 2019, we're not even done with our first day yet, guys. Not even done with our first day. Catch you soon.